crazy Uncle Joe was on the Breakfast Club, sat down with your favorite uh, black person, Charlemagne the God. And I, I saw the video you did. You said you said people think that you uh, hate him, um, but yeah. it's because you're critical of him, and you you have that right to. Like we as black people should um, be critical of those who speak for us. Yeah, yeah. I just don't think somebody who is, uh, you know, these he's he's too. Oh, first of all, I just think he's compromised. I think I don't think that every day. I don't think someone who's worth millions of dollars is ever going to fight as hard for everyday black people as someone who's in the trenches with us. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't think you policy and stuff like that doesn't affect you as much as a wealthy person as someone who's out here living check to check, stretching pennies. You know what I mean? So I don't think him and Al Sharpton speaking for us, it just comes off like circus at circuses to me. Mm -hmm. It looks like three ring circus. I don't see any other people, Asians, whites, nobody speaking up for them. Like Clint Eastwood don't speak politics for conservatives. Right. You know what I'm saying? But, like, but they do they do vote in um in blocks. Like where I work at is a huge Asian community. Like okay. ninety ninety percent of my customers are probably Asian. And I mean, I'm talking about from their businesses, like the strip, the business strip that um I work is literally, I think about six dentists, right? And none of them are broke, like six dentists, all Asian, they all got their own shop and everybody is making money. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about to the point where like even the signs on their um, over their, uh, overhangs like are in, Chinese or whatever, you know, I don't want to be rude, but it's in that lettering. It's not American. Like they have their own little community. They, if a property goes up for sale, there's like an Asian person that's the realtor. Like, so they, in, in some, in some like have their own like structure set up to where though they don't have to, they don't have to have nobody stand up and speak for them because they're going to represent together. Yeah. Yeah. And because we don't have that, we have to, sit here and beg uh some people want entertainers to speak for them and then some people we just like myself we just kind of like damn we gotta deal because i just felt like some of the questions Charlemagne asked was kind of weak could ask some better questions but he hey, didn't, so i feel like he didn't really get a chance to because what's well, going in right? <laughs> yeah well see i said that if you pay attention to it, right? Like, cause they say all great journalists, the one thing that they should do is when you're interviewing somebody, you let them speak. And Joe Biden kind of just like bit off a little bit more than he can handle because he literally was, was talking the way you, the way you described it in your video where you said he was talking like he was on a block. That was like so perfect because Joe Biden kept trying to like hit home this point of, I was in the projects before like gentrification was cool. And, you know, I was, uh, I had a good, good job at a law firm where uh, Martin Luther King was killed. And, like all of these things, but nothing to the point of like, all right, so what are you doing today? Like, yeah, what nothing, are you going to do right now? It's the last thing relevant. He had to go back to like the Obama administration. I think he said he probably he had to lose the black vote after that, but it's still people who you told think me so? I thought that was the dagger right there. I thought that was the big night, but some people was telling me I'm still gonna vote for him. I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> so it, it's my hot take. My hot take. I think if Joe Biden keeps up with this arrogancy the way he was, he might have a fighting chance. Cause that's how Trump came. Trump came mad arrogant. He told Julie he was disrespectful to Hillary. He's like, she's crooked. She's a thief. Like, he ain't show her no respect. And we're all. The, the race part plays a factor in why I don't think it'll work for Biden because you, you're, you're being arrogant towards black folks. If he was oh, arrogant towards just white folks or whatever. But I think the, the race factor is black people is just going to be like, you're going to turn off the black folks, the few of them that did support you because you was Obama's man. And now they're going to see you for being a crooked, white, uh, hunky motherfucker you is in the first place. I think it'll be probably more of, this is true, they're definitely going to see him for what he is. But I think it's going to be more of the millennials, like the younger voters. Because all of the old folks that love Obama, that's Obama's boy. He can't do no wrong. 
Oh yeah, yeah. They, they don't they don't look at stuff like that. They don't watch Breakfast Club. They probably don't even know about that interview. Most of the boom, boomers, most of the boomers. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The ones that are still listen to Steve Harvey every morning. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> they definitely yeah. still catching that ballad for, for Joey. Yeah. Honky Tonk Joe. Yeah, that that's exactly what it was. I mean, he came off as very arrogant to me. Like I didn't when I was listening to it, I was like, I don't like this. Like the energy I was getting, I was like, this this ain't this ain't it. You watch the video. Watch the you, video. You listen to it? Watch the yeah. video. Oh man, it was I wanna see them. He says he's gonna come back when things get normal. I said it, it kinda I think it's gonna be like the Leo Cohen interview. Yeah. I don't think he's going there. I don't, don't think, think he's, I don't think it's well because his PR people they tried to clean it up, right? He, he said that you know he was being uh, a wise guy and being cavalier or whatever, and um, they were saying that the you comments were, huh? Yeah, they get some bad press, right? But I, me personally, like I said, in this day and age, he should have doubled down on it. Like fuck it. Like what else you got to lose? If 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 he lost the vote as we think, or as I like to say, shot himself in the foot, because there's a uh, older black dude at my job, and I asked him about it, and he was like, "What the fuck? What did he say was wrong?" Right? He like got so big, but what he said that was so true was he was like, "Well, we have been mad if a black person said that." As far as what Joey was saying on the on the red was love. No, as far as that comment about if you are having a hard time to decide who to vote between him and Trump, then you ain't black. Like he said, if a black person said that, we probably would not have fucking blinked an eye. Of course not. Yeah, because a black people, like I said, a black person can't be racist. Of course not. That's that's obvious. But it, it wasn't a black person. It was a seventy-something-year-old white man who comes from who was born in the Jim Crow era. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? Who, Probably would have told you to shine his shoes back in the day. Oh, you so <laughs> definitely had some niggas shining his shoes. Yeah, that's a you fact. Tell, you could definitely, you could just tell he, he's that confident, over the top, arrogant white guy. He looks down on niggas. You could just tell he probably oh, he yeah. looks like he looks beneath Charlemagne. I mean, he's like, yeah, man, like come, like he's talking like he's on the block. Right. You wouldn't talk to Anderson Cooper like that. Nope. And and when he was doing his PR like cleanup. Like he was all like on the phone, all calm, and I'm like, "This ain't Joe with the fucking cigarette hanging off his lip." Like, no. where, where's that Joe at? The motherfucker that was, uh, as some people like to refer to, as shucking and jiving. He, uh, he John, definitely did. Think, as I said, though, what, what people who, who fuck with Obama, like, just that. What's your? Does this change the stance on Obama? Like now that Joe Biden is more like it's now that now we know more about Joe Biden's character. Has it changed anything on how you felt about Obama as far as like, as I think birds of a feather kind of flock together, even in business uh, to a certain degree. You know, you the people you hang out with kind of is a reflection of your character to a certain, to, to me. You know what right. I'm saying? Like people, the crowd you with. And I'm like, you align yourself with that guy? And if, so if you black and you fuck with Obama, but yet you, See his vice president is this snob. Like how how does that not change your you know, does it change your stance on Obama a little bit? Um, if I had to answer that, I would probably say I n- me personally, no, because I understand like how that game works. Like Joe Biden had to be his VP. Like they weren't going to let Obama have anybody else. Like, and if we if we want to dig deep into the whole conspiracy theory thing, like, all right, let's say that they were like, all right, we're going to let this this black man be the face, but he has to have a white guy with him because that's quote unquote America. Like, imagine if it was two niggas in the White House at the oh, yeah. same damn time. Oh man, somebody would have got killed. Obama and some call weathers looking. Like yeah, <laughs> it will. It's everywhere in the world. So, so what do what do you think uh, Joe Biden has to do? Let's put a put a button on this because me personally, huh? To do what does he have to do for what? To to secure like, do you think that this is going to hurt him or 
But what do you I think he has it. to do to? But we really don't have a choice, though, right? Like, because that's basically how he told us. Like, what are you niggas going to do? <laughs> I think it was funny at the same time. It's like he said, what are you niggas going to do? He put the pressure on niggas. Like, he's basically like, look, you're going to either vote for the lesser evil or deal with 45. But I think some Negroes and some of these niggas, that's what they're going to be called, Negroes. Mm. Some of these Negroes are skin of 45. And they'll still vote for Biden because he's the nicer version of Massa, you know? Right. You got one Massa to let you outside on the weekends and another Massa that, you know, you get one day off. It's your choice. But I don't really think he can. I don't know. I don't think he can. I just think Trump's entertainment factor and all of that, I just think Trump's going to be Trump 2020, honestly. Yeah, he, he, that's what it seems like, too. He's got the persona. Um, some people are thinking that this um, this coronavirus uh, pandemic is going to hurt his chances because of the fact that he let so many people die under his watch when he could have fixed fixed it earlier. I don't know how he could have fixed it, but uh, but when you say that when you brought up the pandemic, now Charlemagne did ask about that, and when he asked Joe Biden about the pandemic, and Biden was like. Well, but um, I, I just been house quarantined. That was his response. To the <laughs> yeah, whole, that was his response. Yeah. So I was following the rules, man. <laughs> he basically, was, like, nigga, I was chilling. He was like, I was chilling. You know what I'm saying? He was quarantined. And I'm like, so I don't know how you can really. What what what, what can you do? Mm. You know what I mean? It's like the bird flew out here. What can you do? I don't. Not that I'm a Trump supporter. I'm trying to defend them, but, but how, I don't see how you. Uh, this isn't like the Hurricane Katrina and Bush and FEMA and all that shit. I don't put it up there with that. But I mean, not as far as a crisis, but I mean, as far as, I don't see how you can just blame it on one person. Right. I don't know either, that, man. Yeah, what would you do? <laughs> There's nothing you can do to shut everything down. Yeah. Yeah, just, but I mean, I, I think I think what, what they're saying is the fact that as the numbers are growing, like, because I think last night or whatever, I was looking on Twitter and they were saying that as I think it reached like 100,000, this motherfucker's on a golf course somewhere. Oh, yeah. That's not a good look. Yeah, when you out there playing golf with Phil Nicholson and them niggas. Right, and people over here <laughs> fucking dying and shit. And, like, we ain't got enough fucking masks or gloves or anything. And you posting memes on Twitter. No. <laughs> Trump done turned into a Twitter nigga. That's wild. <laughs> That's wild. Best follows on there. Him, I can't get into OJ Simpson. I can't, I can't get myself to hit the follow button on OJ's day. Nah, I ain't following OJ. Mm. Something, something, no. Because he going he gonna to do something too wild. <laughs> wow. We all going to be in court. Everybody that follow him. Well, shit. He he put some video up talking about getting revenge or something. Like, oh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't need to be talking about anything like that. The word, the, the word re revenge should not even be in OJ Simpson's uh, yeah. vocabulary. But that's just, I'm plugging OJ's uh, Twitter for people. Nah, I'm I'm all set. <laughs> um, What else has been going on since... Uh, so, so that's it with Biden, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I, don't, I mean, I don't think there's much else we can say. He showed his that. I just want to see what's going to happen um, in the next couple of weeks. Like, I'm going to keep a close eye on it because um, this is really fascinating because yeah. this, this is going to show a lot of people's true colors. And, like, let we already know where we stand in this country is black and brown people. But we're really going to see how these politicians feel about us now, especially now that they're trying to open up the country, but people still don't have money. People still don't have jobs and civil unrest is going to come and, you know, fucking they're going to get tired of police fucking just killing us for no reason. Like yeah, 2020 so is not done showing us what's about to oh, be real. So when I made that video, the first, I changed the title like three times. The first title was Joe Biden shows his ass. Then, hmm. then Joe Biden shows his ass on Breakfast Club and True Colors, and I'm just like, I'm trying to just nail the point. Like, I just, I just went straight for it. 
Joe Biden said you ain't black. <laughs> yeah, Joe Biden basically says you niggas ain't shit. That's what yeah. I'm talking about. You know Yo, did you did they did they hit you with a copyright um thing? No. No, iHeart got me with a copyright strike. I gotta go back and look. They might have. Yeah, I they thought got you me. Before. I was. I nah. thought you said. You know what? I can't believe I just picked it up and drank it out the bottle. I got a whole glass right here. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, damn. So you drink yeah. a whole... Nah, I, I, do nah. Drink, I do drink those Pellegrinos like 40. Um, since we're talking...